Obviously, with the wars going on, handling issues around deployment and ops tempo, I think, are, are um, so operation tempo, are the most pressing kinds of needs. The folks that are deploying, when they're deployed, they're obviously gone. That's the strain, and they're exposed to all the things that they are. When they come back, they're part of a skeleton crew that's trying to man the shop while they're at home, and they're working enormous hours um, just to try to get the you know bare minimum finished. Longitudinal research, which is the bread and butter of a lot of family researchers, is incredibly difficult to do in the military because of both deployment cycles and just um, the, the change of, of station cycles that they go through. People are moving all the time and they're not moving in predictable ways. And so Often, if you're trying to do research with a, a school district or a mental health center or whatever, you, you have the whole proposal kind of designed, and now you're trying to recruit sites. And I wouldn't approach military research that way. With a, a reasonable amount of effort, not more effort than is um, sustainable, that you can harness the infrastructure and the resources that they have in place to do things that will, in fact, um, make Air Force communities healthier. And I think that's uh, pretty encouraging. A lot of the problems that um, people are interested in um, reducing and, and serving families are um, many of them have similar risk um, and protective factors related to them. You can see that there are a few key um, elements um, that if you leveraged community-wide um, improvements on those things, you would naturally end up having an impact across a vast array of outcomes. If there are empirically supported activities to address those um, problems or those risk factors, they are related to um, almost every um, behavioral health outcome that one would want to reduce. And so you get sort of a double benefit by doing that. Not only do you improve the community's health on something important like depressive symptoms, but you then are naturally driving down uh, an array of outcomes that would be almost impossible trying to chip away one at a time to be able to marshal the resources to do that. I think that, that we know um, very little about the, the kind of ways in which these repeated deployments are going to have the effects that they have on families and on military members, and, um, and even what those effects will be and for whom, <clears throat> and how we can predict that and what the mechanisms of that are. I mean, we just haven't had wars that behave this way mm -hmm. before. There's a lot going on, um, and there's no easy centralized resource. I know. If you're interested in longitudinal studies, for instance, uh, at the effect of deployment on children, well, you're talking about a first deployment? And if you're talking about first deployment, you're almost talking about different people than people who are now on their second, third, or fourth deployment. And if you're talking about any deployment at all, um, you're mixing them all up together and, and you'd at least want to be tracking um, something like that as a, a, a factor. Um, I think that you should prepare from the outset for this being a study, a sample that nearly instantly disperses far and wide and collect um, very aggressively collect recontact information, not just from the family, but who everybody's mother was and everybody's friends and everybody's anything they'll give you. As much, as many different ways of trying to reconnect with this family as possible. Because mm -hmm. non-military researchers think that there's far more tracking of those kinds of things than, than there really is. Right. Mm -hmm. Of course, the biggest incentive of all for families to participate is a sense that um, this is useful and is going to be useful for other military families. And if they really buy into the importance of what they're doing, mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot easier to be able to get their continued participation. And I
I mean, I'd have to say it's, um, for me personally, um, it, this has been the most um, gratifying and humbling and challenging um, work of my professional life. Uh, the sacrifices and the um, sense of duty and responsibility um, that both uh, military members and their family members, and then it extends to their children and their parents. Um, it, it, you know, I've met some of the nicest and most dedicated and wonderful people um, through this um, research um, initiatives and the opportunity to be able to do anything to be able to benefit their lives. Um, it's just, you know, a very gratifying position to be in. It's, it is worth doing because it is, um, because the people are so amazing, the families have done so much, and um, it seems like the least you can do is to try to, to make their lives a little bit easier and go a little bit better.